Hello and welcome to Quirky Cat Crafts. This is Sherry. Okay, you guys, this is part one of what's going to be a very extensive video series. I am getting ready to do a very, very large mosaic for my brother. And the theme is Dungeons and Dragons, which was kind of inspired by the dragon book box that I just did recently. Um, I have a ton of ideas, a ton of things that I can use, and I've been thinking about it um, for a couple of weeks now, and I realized I really needed to get some stuff down on paper. So I just grabbed a little notebook and kind of jotted down the 10 things that I really need to focus on. So um, the first was what was I going to use for the substrate? And I ended up ordering a, a framed mirror, black framed mirror off of Amazon which is 26 by 20 inches. And my plan is that I'm not gonna put mosaic tiles on the frame itself. The tiles are gonna get glued to the mirror, but I'm gonna leave the center of the mirror open so that it would still be a mirror. So like if this is the mirror, I would leave a center section open to be a mirror and then the tiles will go all the way around. Does that make sense? Okay. And then um, embedding charms, um, weapons and armor, um, buttons, which I may or may not use. I have a castle, a uh, treasure chest, a book of spells, and a um, black glitter lock and key. They may or may not get used. It just depends because I have a lot going on on this. And until I start making the tiles and laying it out onto the mirror, I won't know if I, you know, do I have a lot of room to spare and I can fit them in? Do I have no room to spare and I'm not going to use them? I don't know, but they're on the list. And then um, figures. I have heroes and dragons and also dice. So let me show you. Um, I'm not going to pull them all out, but so like I ordered a dice set and they're actually, they're metal. They're very heavy. And... Um, the, behind each number, it's really hard to see, but there's like dragons behind each number. So, um, as opposed to just a, a originally I was going to do glow in the dark dice and I actually ordered some of those, but then I came across these and I like them better. So, um, my plan for the dice and the figures is I'm going to use... Um, pieces of chipboard and um, glue them together. I may glue it a little bit further up and put something underneath here for extra weight support, you know. Um, so that and these will be painted and then the dice will sit and then this part will get glued to the mirror. So it'll be like it's sitting on a shelf. Okay, does that make sense? And then same thing for this little set of um, figures that I ordered. So like this is like an archer, it's got a bow. And those are gonna go also, same thing. And I'm not gonna glue the dice down or the figures down so that they'll be able to be moved from shelf to shelf and kind of moved around. So um, I may or may not do a coat of glow-in-the-dark paint on top of whatever color I paint the chipboard. I'm going to test it out and see how it looks and go from there. And then I also have a few of these um, little rubber dragon toys. And so those will get a shelf of their own as well. So there's going to be, I have six figures. There's seven dice, but two of them go together because they're like percentage dice, um, 10 sided dice basically. Um, so those will go on one shelf. And, um, and then I have four of the dragons. So I have 16, there will be 16 little shelves around the mirror, okay? Um, stickers. I got this sticker book off of Amazon. Dungeons and Dragons Stickerology. Okay, so there's 
I know there's certain ones I'm going to use and certain ones I'm not, but I'll do a quick flip through here. So there's like Notable Heroes, not going to use any of those. Um, villains, probably. Because um, mostly the stickers for the bad guys, the monsters. Um, but because they are on different colors, like this is on a light blue, these are on dark green, these are on purple, the dragons are. So I'm probably going to pick one or possibly two from each section. Because if I have like three from this page and only one green, it's going to drive my OCD crazy. So, um, when I get to that point, I'll have to figure out which ones I want to use. Like if I want to use this creature and I'm going to use them, um, attach them to chipboard. So like, and I'm going to probably paint the chipboard black and then attach the sticker to it with the, with the glue and then do a coat of varnish on the top. Okay, so, you know, there will be a couple off of this one. Two dragons that are on the purple. Um, two off of these two pages. I know I'm going to use the kobold for sure. And I'll probably use the goblin. And, let's see. And then two off of the these two pages. So, probably this beholder guy. And then one other one. I don't know. Kind of like him. And then there's also giants. May or may not use on this one. There's elves and humans. And see, and there's all kinds of other items I can use here. Little figures. There's a map. Um, oops. Um, dwarves and gnomes. So these are like the heroes. But I have the heroes covered with the figurines. So I won't use any of these. Okay. And then some wizarding stuff. Clerics. Rogues and bards. So you'll see there's like a treasure chest. And a book, weapons, but I have all that covered with the charms and the stamps. So, um, I don't want to use too many stickers. Just a couple. So I'm probably not going to use any of these. They'll get used on another one. I'm sure I'll get other orders for... Um, these are like NPC, non-player characters. So there's like, I love him, he's a... Oh my gosh, what's the word? Like a tinker. And then you got this guy with the scrolls. Got an armor maker. But I think he's all one thing and that might be too much. So, but I might use these two guys. A couple of non-player characters. And then I may or may not use some magic weapons and treasure. I was looking at like the cloak, pair of boots, the helmet, gloves. Again, the weapons are covered. And some other random stickers back here. And then they even have the alphabets. And I was toying with the idea. For those of you that don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, um, there are six primary characteristics for your player, for your character. There's strength. Constitution, Charisma, Dexterity, Wisdom, and Intelligence. And I was actually thinking about spelling out those six words under a glass cabochon. And there's Dwarvish, Elvish, and Dragon script. Again, that, that'll be a last thing, and that's if I have a lot of spaces I need to fill in. Um... So we'll have to see on that. But anyway, so that's stickers. Okay. And then 
Um, we're going to skip signs for the moment and go down to stamps. So stamps, of course, I have dragons, I have a castle, and then I've got a whole, a whole ungodly amount of, I haven't even pulled them all. So like here's some silhouettes of like wizards and witches. Okay. Got some like cobblestone walls. Some potion bottles. Um, treasure chest. Some interesting like wands and staves kind of deals here. And maybe one of the Fortune Teller Globes. What are those called? Crystal Balls. Jeez Louise. Um, I pulled this one out because I like the oil lamp with the quill and the scroll. That might get used. And then I just got these two sets. Oh wow, that's a glare. Probably going to use this stack of books with... So I may not use the other one because this has got uh, the quill and ink and a scroll with a crow standing on top of it. And then I have another one where there's an owl standing on a stack of books. Okay. And then, of course, the castle stamps and my dragon stamps and all that, which I haven't even pulled out yet. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of stamping going on. It's not going to be all on the same color of clay. And what I need to decide before I start stamping so that I'm not wasting a bunch of clay is what colors I'm going to stamp what items on and whether I'm going to stamp them in colored ink or black ink. If I'm doing black ink, am I going to color in with alcohol inks or mica powders? I mean, so there's going to be a lot of steps involved um, with the stamping. And I will sit down and figure it out when I'm ready to start stamping. Okay. Um, leafing, I'm going to use silver. And I've got a texture sheet that's called a uh, cable knit sweater. So I don't know how well that's showing up, but you can reverse it so that the pattern stands up. And that to me kind of says a little bit like chain mail. So I'm going to do a couple of sheets of that that can be cut up to use as filler. Um, the reason I'm not going to do dragon scales on filler is because I've got a couple of options of mica powders that are like color shifting. So depending on what angle you're looking at it, it's like could be red, could be blue, just depends. And I'm either going to do it on silver or black clay. I'll try it on both and see which one I like better. And then stamp filler or texture filler, filler either one. Um, and I want to do something on each of the four main clay colors that I'm using. Um, I know that I'm doing a dark purple clay. And I know that stamp that I want to use, which is like a diamond harlequin pattern, which kind of makes me think of what's on like the flags and the banners and stuff. Um, and I'll do that probably in silver ink. Um, let me discuss that with you real quick. The decor of the room is uh, the walls are uh, midnight blue. So it's kind of a blackish blue gray color. That's kind of how it's described. It's like navy blue, black and gray all mixed together. And then the floors are wood floors, but they are a gray toned wood floor. And then the doors and the trim are black. So whereas normally I would do a lot of gold and browns. Um, for this one, because of the decor of the room, I'm going to do mostly blacks and grays and silvers and whites. So, um, that's kind of what I'm thinking along those lines. Now I want to talk to you about the signs, which is number six on here. And I'm going to move my notebook aside. But yeah, I just started jotting things down and making notes because I have so much going on. Um, as a matter of fact, I've already done the charms, the weapons and armor, and I'll show you that real quick. And I did that as a separate video. I haven't posted it yet, but I will. Um, but these are the four clay colors. Um, I want to talk to you real quick about this color. Well, let's start with this. As I've said in previous videos, I always try to do um, four types of clay. So I like to do a glitter, a souffle, a pearl, and uh, regular. So the purple is regular and that's a uh, primo purple. And that's definitely going to get stamped with the Harlequin Pattern stamp. 
Okay. The glitter is called garnet glitter. And I want to show you guys this because looking at it here, it looks very pink, like a very pink color, but it darkens up a lot after baking because this is what it looks like after you bake it. It's like a deep red. And, um, so that's my glitter choice. And then the souffle is the green. Um, and that's a new color called racing green, which I love that color. And then the pearl is a uh, navy blue pearl. So, and I did the little pieces of armor on that. So this is already done and ready to go into the oven. But I'm not going to bake it yet because I've got room for two more tiles. So I want to at least get some more tiles made. And that's kind of the other thing that's funny about this project is that in regards to clay, the charms, probably the buttons if I decide to do buttons, the stamps, leaping, dragging scales, and the stamp filler. Okay, so those are all on clay. But I have a lot going on with the figures, the heroes, the dragons, the dice, the stickers, and the signs that are on wood and metal. So more so than what I normally do. So those steps are going to be saved for probably later. I want to get all of the clay tiles made up and baked first and then we'll go from there so now let me tell you about the signs okay so i was perusing amazon and this is actually a halloween stamp set and i'm gonna make sure i'm in the shot okay so they're little they're little signs okay so um like this one says i have to hold it up i can't read it Alchemy Emporium Potions and Elixirs Magical Remedies. And it's got a little potion bottle on there, right? And so that makes me think of, you know, like the signs, the wood signs that are hanging over the door. This one over here says Apothecary, Enchantress Apothecary, where potion and glamour weave their spells. And it's got a witch with a cauldron, okay? So I did a test on um, a piece of, it's like a, a wooden chipboard tag. Um, to see if it would fit and see these are a little too small because I had a whole bunch of these um, and I stamped it in the in a purple ink just to test it out and see and but the hole in the tag kind of messes up the words so I went um, back on Amazon and I got some bigger tags okay so that I can fit the whole thing on the tag and it doesn't impinge on the hole at the top okay so my plan for these and I've got to test it out that's why this one's still out so I'm gonna do um, a coat of silver paint and then a coat of glow and dark glow in the dark paint on top of it and then stamp the image in the different colors again I want to use the four colors of clay, I want to use those colors of ink as well. So I've got a purple, a deep red, a dark green, and a navy blue. And I want to do um, two signs in each color, okay? So I'm not using all of these because some of them specifically say Halloween, okay? Um, like this one, was it this one? No. This one. Uh, Sleepy Hollow Dead and Breakfast, but it says established 1799. Well, that's not going to work for the Dungeons and Dragons world, so I, I can't use that one unless I tried to figure out a way to eliminate the established date, but I'm not going to mess with it because I've also got this, the old Salem Fireside Inn book ahead, I think is what it says. Yes, book ahead, and there's no date on that, so that will be the one I use. Even though it's got a pumpkin jack-o'-lantern on it, it I'm going to use that one. So, okay, so painted silver, stamped in colored ink. Sorry, painted silver, coat of glow-in-the-dark paint, the stamped ink. And I believe it's going to be like, so the background will glow and then the, the stamp will be darker. We're going to test it out. I'm going to test it out on this piece and we'll see how it goes. So, 
But back to this. So they're going to go on these bigger tags. Okay. Um, in regards to the ones that are vertical. Okay. Then I'm going to take a bigger piece of chipboard. Okay. And... Um, come here. One of these metal, and it's like open in the back, and it's just a metal tile that I'm going to glue to the top of this. And this is going to be painted um, a darker gray, probably. And then I'm going to stamp a wood texture in black on it. Okay. So that it's going to be like a wall behind it. Then I'm going to string either rawhide, which is what came with the sign, or some of this chain. And it'll go through the hole. Right. And then it'll go under this. Right, it'll go under this piece. I just all planned out in my head, you guys. So it'll go under. So then when this is glued to the mirror, it's going to be like the sign is hanging from, you know, it'll be like that, but it'll be hanging. So it's dimensional. Does that make sense? Am I making sense, you guys? I know I'm kind of all over the place with this, but that's my thought. And I'm probably going to use the rope, to be honest. Um, I don't know that I like the chain. So, um, and now it's stuck. That's uh, lovely. Well, it got stuck. I'll have to fix that later. Anyway, um, so then it'll be hanging. So like it's hanging on a, on a signpost or something. I would have loved to have done something. I played with the idea of having it like out like this, but they would then block the view of mosaic tiles behind it and so we're going to go flat but it'll be up a little bit so it'll just be dangling so i know i'm going to use this alchemy emporium i know that i'm going to use uh pick your witch's brew oh witch's brew tavern pick your poison i might use one or both of these two this one says devil's delight fiery mischief in the moonlight and this one says, embrace the skinwalker society wild within. And it's got like a howling wolf. I don't know on those. Okay, definitely not using the clown. And like I said, that's got a date on it. And then down here at the bottom, this one I'm, I'm not real thrilled with. It just says, beware the witch's, the witchful gaze that chills your spine. Um, but this one says, goblins oddities, must-haves for the ma mischief makers. And... That's awesome. And then over here, there's one that says Mystic Manuscript Shop. From pages to potions where wizarding reigns. And I definitely want to use these two. Now this one says, let's light up the spooky night. That's definitely Halloween themed. But these two I want to use. But they're not going to work with the tag, right? Because they would be the wrong way. So what I'm going to do for these is... Um, they're going to get, they're going to go on one of these pieces of wood, okay? Might have to go a little bit bigger piece, probably. I may stamp those on clay instead, but what I was thinking was I have this little door, and so I thought I would just, you know, put it above the door so that it's like a sign mounted above the door. So that's something else I'm thinking about. I also need to go back through all my stamps and see if I have a bigger door because it's not quite, I mean, it's pretty big compared to the size of the door. Um, but this one would not be hanging. It would just be flat, these two, okay? Thought process. This is what I've been thinking about while I've been driving my truck, you guys. Okay, so over here we've got... Um, Night Strike Vampire Hunters, Harnessing the Darkness, Eradicating the Undead. That's a possibility. This is Old Salem, Fireside Inn, Book Ahead. We've already read that one. That one's going to get used. 
the Enchantress Apothecary is going to get used. This says, Dark Shadows Mortuary, where darkness cradles departed souls. That one might get used. This is, I love the Black Cat Crossing, but it says Halloween on there, so that's not going to work. And then this one says Happy Halloween. So, um, let's do this. So we're going to cover up the ones that I know for sure I'm not using so that I'm not overwhelmed. So I know I'm not using her and I know I'm not using him. Definitely not using the creepy clowns. I don't do creepy clowns. The dead and breakfast doesn't work because it has a date on it. This is Halloween. And this is Halloween. So what does that leave us? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know that I'll use all of them. I know I want to use these two for sure. And I wish that I could figure out a way. I do have... Because, like, see, this chip piece of chipboard's not big enough. And I don't think I have any that are wider. No. No. Those are the same size. Um, so, I don't know. Unless I just did it directly on one of these bigger pieces and I may not do the door idea I might just these might just go and they'll just be bigger because I do like the Goblin's Oddities and the Mystic Manuscript Shop both of those very much so we'll have to see but that's where I'm at in regards to planning out this massive project so like I said, a lot going on, so I started to having to make a list and check it twice. Ha uh ha. -huh. So, um, the charms and the weapons and armor is already done. And they're ready to go. So, and that'll be video number two. So, I think the next one I'm going to do is work on the stamps. Because they're going to be the bigger items. And once I have all those done, I'll know how much more room I have to work with. So, um, part two will be the weapons and armor. Even though you guys have already seen it done in this video, I do. I did film embedding them. Um, so that'll be part two. So I think part three is going to be stamps galore. So, I hope that you guys will tune in for that. I'm really looking forward to this project. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's definitely a direction that I've not gone um, at in the past. So um, it should be interesting. So we'll see how it comes out. All right. That's it for now, you guys. This is the end of part one. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>